This is a map of Iceland. The small island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is home to some of the world's most active volcanoes. One of those active volcanoes is the very active Katla supervolcano. It is a large and very active volcano in the southern part of Iceland, possibly the largest and most dangerous volcano in Iceland. It is very active, meaning over 20 eruptions in the last 1,000 years. But the last violent eruption now dates back a suspiciously long 104 years. If it were to erupt again today, as it did in the year 934, when a massive Bay 6 volcanic eruption occurred on the small rocky island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the effects on the climate in our globalized world overall would be much greater. Let's look at a smaller scale example, the year 2010. On April 14, 2010, a volcano in Iceland erupted unexpectedly without warning. It caused massive flight delays and stranded travelers throughout Europe as tons of volcanic ash and dust spewed into the atmosphere. By the time airports reopened five days later, 60% of European flights had been cancelled, and more than 100,000 travelers had been affected. While that was obviously very bad, the volcanic eruption could have been much worse. In the past, eruptions with devastating effects have occurred. For example, 1816, known as the year without a summer, the volcanoes spewed out so much ash and smoke that it blocked out the sun and caused a year-long winter. If Europe had another year without a summer, it could mean that all of Europe's airports would shut down. If this happens, how well can the global air traffic network cope? Join us in this video, we show you the terrifying new discovery in Iceland that changes everything. To find out, the assistant professor Trivik Verma from the Energy Science Center ETH Zurich mapped a global airline traffic network of 18,000 different routes between 3,237 airports, tracing countless connections. As it turns out, the network is somewhat robust. The average number of connections between any two airports on Earth is 4, with the longest distance between any two locations being 12 connections. There are about 73 big airport hubs like Frankfurt, Heathrow, Dubai, Los Angeles, Chicago and so on, that connect more airports than elsewhere. While a volcanic eruption grounding flights at one of these major airports would be inconvenient for travelers, the disruption would not actually do much to disrupt the worldwide air traffic network. It's these periphery connection hubs that are the most vulnerable parts of the world's air traffic network and most at risk to disruption. For example, in Tampa Bay, Florida, the St. Petersburg Clearwater Airport, it has connections to 24 different airports that are not otherwise served by the global air traffic network. If an enormous volcano erupted, for example, in the US or in Mexico, forcing St. Petersburg Clearwater Airport to close, these 24 peripheral airport hubs would be completely stranded. So the next time a supervolcano erupts, the most populated parts of the planet will be inconvenienced. Sure, but they'll be able to reroute traffic around them. It's the millions of people living on the edge of the worldwide flight network who really have to worry. Could a volcanic super eruption still trigger a global catastrophe? How costly would be such a disaster? Even though the spectacle of big terrifying volcanic eruptions was emblazoned in our childhood imaginations, an earth-shattering volcanic explosion, followed by gushing bursts of lava and billowing smoke. However, a supervolcano most likely wouldn't completely shut down the global air traffic network totally. These large-scale volcanic eruptions are still very real and dangerous. In a worst-case scenario, a super-rare and very powerful supervolcanic eruption could possibly devastate the whole planet. Now scientists are warning that it wouldn't take such a big volcanic outburst to already trigger a global catastrophe. New research has suggested that much smaller scale volcanic eruption events can still unleash sufficient chaos to endanger the modern world as we know it. The volcano from the 2010 Iceland volcanic eruption showed us already a glimpse of what could happen with a volcano of a bigger scale. Even a minor eruption in one of the areas we identify could erupt enough ash or generate large enough tremors to disrupt networks that are central to global supply chains and financial systems, says Laura Manny, global risk researcher at the University of Cambridge. At the moment, calculations are too skewed towards giant explosions or nightmare scenarios, when the more likely risks come from moderate events that disable major international communications, trade networks, or transport hubs. Obviously the smaller and moderate volcanic eruptions don't seize our attention as much, as their more thunderous and dangerous counterparts, but they can wreak in total more havoc. A rather typical case would be the magnitude 6 volcanic eruption from Mount Pinatubo in 1991 in the Philippines, which was approximately 100 times more powerful than the Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull magnitude 4 volcanic eruption in 2010. But Eyjafjallajökull turned out to be most costly volcanic eruption in history, with a total damage bill of around 5 billion US dollars to the global economy. While the losses from Mount Pinatubo's far bigger volcanic eruption were only a fraction of that about 740 million US dollars in 2021. But how is this imbalance possible? 
Lara Manny and her team call it the Ve GCR asymmetry, a special kind of paradigm where the danger of volcanoes doesn't rise in line with the power of volcanoes. Ve is the abbreviation for Volcanic Explosivity Index and GCR for Global Catastrophic Risk. Historically, volcanic risk assessments have always suggested that the more powerful a volcano's eruption gets, the greater a danger it presents in the matter of global catastrophic risk, a relationship that can be called Ve GCR symmetry. But this might possibly not be the case anymore, because much of the world's critical infrastructure nowadays, including international shipping passages, submarine telecommunications cables, and aerial transportation routes, is not especially close to the volcanic regions that produce the most powerful eruptions. But only for the most part, we observe that many of these critical infrastructures and networks converge in regions where they could be exposed to moderate-scale volcanic eruptions. The researchers write in their study, these regions of intersection, or pinch points, present locations localities where we have prioritized efficiency over resilience and manufactured a new global catastrophic risk landscape. According to the analysis the team did, there are seven of these pinch points around the globe, where the most critical infrastructure elements now lie dangerously close to V3 to V6 magnitude volcanic eruptions. These also include Taiwan, which produces crucial amount of the world's microchips, the global supply of which is jeopardized by the proximity to the Ta'an volcanic group. In the US, moderate volcanic eruptions in the Pacific Northwest have the potential to disrupt trade and travel in both the US and Canada, causing massive economic harm to both nations. Concurrently, volcanoes in Iceland have the potential to create a kind of pinch point in the North Atlantic, disrupting aerial traffic between London and New York, and causing serious delays for international transportation networks and trade. Some other pinch points on Earth are around Malaysia and the Mediterranean. They threaten some of the international most busiest shipping routes. Another one, which is located in the Luzon Strait, is a very important route for crucial underwater telecommunications cables connecting Hong Kong, Taiwan, China and South Korea. They all could be damaged by volcanic eruptions, causing unpredictable tsunamis and submarine landslides, which would result in severe disruptions to communication abilities and the financial markets. These kind of downstream consequences are not the first things that spring to mind when we think of the impressive destructive power of volcanoes, but maybe they should be, the researchers suggest. It's time to change how we view extreme volcanic risk, Manny says. We need to move away from thinking in terms of colossal eruptions destroying the world. As portrayed in Hollywood films, the more probable scenarios involve lower magnitude eruptions interacting with our societal vulnerabilities and cascading us towards catastrophe. A good example for such a lower magnitude eruption scenario was the earlier mentioned 2010 volcanic eruption of the Eyjafjallajökull volcano, a very unusually high fraction of the volcanic ash particles spewed into the sky by Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull volcano last April. The particles were small and sharp and therefore posed very high risks to airplanes and also human health. A new study suggests that means the week-long shutdown of much of Europe's air traffic, which was ordered by civil aviation authorities, affected 10 million passengers and cost between 2.5 billion and 5 billion US dollars, was likely worth it. The Eyjafjallajökull volcano began to erupt on March 20, 2010. In the first couple of weeks, lava oozed from a fissure on the ice-free flank, and the developing ash plume was anything but impressive. On the 14th of April, however, from the ice-filled crater at the mountain's peak, molten rock began flowing and the eruption became explosive. The resulting plume of ash wafted southeast all over Europe and triggered the largest disruption of the continent's air traffic network since World War II. The debate was largely a matter of safety versus economics, uncertain about whether and when to shut down air traffic, as well as when to open the skies to aircrafts again. It was a matter of losing big bucks versus losing people, says Susan Stipp, a geochemist at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. Stipp and her colleagues proposed that ash falls from this volcanic eruption weren't a giant risk to Europe, however the ones in Iceland have been clearly hazardous to human beings and to grazing animals that may have ingested good-sized quantities of the sharp-edged grit. The idea that a volcano might erupt is hardly an earth-shattering revelation. We know they do, we see them erupting all the time, and we know how destructive they can be. As we have learned, also the smaller and medium-sized volcanic eruptions can cause harm to our global societal network. Recently new volcanic eruptions are causing a lot of fear among the people and especially those living near the volcanoes. For example Mount Rainier, the massive active volcano standing in the Washington landscape. Mount Rainier is a towering volcanic mountain surrounded by wildflower meadows and biological diversity, ascending to 14,410 feet above sea level. It stands as an iconic view of Washington. A subalpine forest cloaks the lower slopes of Mount Rainier 
Rainier while five major rivers originate on its icy summit. Although this sounds pretty, recently people saw giant clouds at the Mount Rainier volcano, which supposedly must have looked so alarmingly that the USGS, United States Geological Survey, had to clear up rumors that a volcanic eruption at Mount Rainier is imminent. Reports on social media said steam was venting from the volcano. Here is a quick clip of a Twitter user's video to show you what people saw. It is. It is definitely moving. But the USGS says it was actually a cloud and not the result of any geologic activity. The sort of behavior seen in this video is not unusual, the agency wrote at 10.09 am Pacific time. In a subsequent news release, however, it confirmed that a new vent has not opened on the volcano. After looking at the data we collect, the USGS seismic network does not show any unusual levels of activity coming from Mount Rainier, the agency wrote. However, another recent volcanic eruption that nearly could have shut down the air traffic network was the massive Tonga volcano volcano in the South Pacific. When an underwater volcano in Tonga erupted in January 2022, scientists watched it belch out more than ash and volcanic gases. It also spewed 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water vapor into Earth's atmosphere. The water vapor spewing out of a volcano could end up being the most destructive part of the eruption because it could exacerbate global warming and deplete the ozone layer. When the volcano erupted, it became the most powerful on Earth in more than 30 years. It emitted an equal force of 100 Hiroshima bombs rumbled like a bell around the planet, generated tsunamis, and triggered more than 590,000 lightning strikes within three days. However, this gets to show that every year big volcanic eruptions can happen and put the air traffic network at risk. It is highly unlikely going to fail completely, but we just never can predict the impact of such events beforehand. We've thought for a long time that a supervolcano eruption would be one of the prime causes of historical extinctions. But what if they're not? We did currently do pretty well dealing with a global pandemic. But how would things be if we get stuck in a year-long volcanic winter. Tell us your thoughts in the comments.